Hi, and welcome to my new video series, um, Fragments of Infinity. Basically, uh, what they didn't teach you in music school. Uh, that's what this uh, whole thing will be about. However, before I get started, I'd like to introduce myself and my uh, YouTube channel so you get an idea of what I'm all about and why I'm posting certain things, okay? So anyway, my name is Vinny Caggiano. I've been, I'm a guitarist. Uh, my musical history is kind of um, interesting. I've gone to all sorts of places I never expected to go. Um, I started out uh, when I was a kid. I was, uh, of course, influenced by the Beatles. They were this big smash. And when I saw them on Ed Sullivan, I wanted to be like the Beatles. I wanted to play electric guitar and be a pop star. Uh, so I did pick up the guitar, and it turned out I had, uh, I was born with some talent. I was lucky. Um, so I picked up the guitar at about eight years old and kept doing it and doing it and doing it. And by the thir time I was like 13, I, uh, I started a garage rock band, and we were doing all this pseudo-psychedelic stuff as kids. Um, by the time I turned 17, I remember I was in my parents' house, and I'm hearing some classical music, turned out to be Bach. And I thought to myself, you know, of course, as a kid, Bach wasn't cool. It wasn't, you know, what's happening. But uh, I don't know. I thought about it. It's like, wow, this guy lived in, what, the 1600s? And they still know his name and they still play his music? This is probably important. I should check it out. So I did. And after that, I became voracious about classical music. I, I had a cousin who was given away a piano, and my parents, thankfully, uh, brought that piano. Um, uh, and... I started learning on my own uh, to play piano, uh, all the various chords, all the various keys, stuff like that. I stacked myself up with music theory books, how to orchestrate, basic theory, advanced theory, you name it. I, I just started gobbling all this stuff and I'm kind of still in high school at this point. Uh, when I got out of high school, I uh, <laughs> even after all the classical stuff, I wound up going to a jazz school. And uh, I wasn't even into jazz, but I wanted to get the degree and I wanted to learn how to arrange for orchestra and compose for orchestra. So I figured this would be the ticket. My parents couldn't afford a good school. So I t went to a local commuter school on Long Island uh, called Five Towns College. Uh, in any case, uh, I learned jazz theory there. I had to arrange for horns uh, and heavy, heavy music theory. And also I got piano lessons. By the way, I never took a guitar lesson in my life. I did everything on my own and when I learned all the heavyweight theory I told myself if I'm going to be worth my salt as a musician I have to be able to you know put this theory on the neck of my guitar so it's no longer a theory but a practice and I did that for years and years and years um, and it's finally it's paid off in uh, the recent decade for me in terms of I feel like I'm going places where I've wanted to go as a musician. Um, so I get out of jazz school, and this is like late 70s, so now the punk rock thing is coming in, and uh, also disco is still really big. My first gig out of college was with an all-black disco band. I was the only white guy. They called me the Blue-Eyed Soul Brother, which I loved, and I got entrance, entrance into uh, towns on Long Island that white people were not allowed to go to. Um, you know, there was a lot of racial tension in those days and a lot of segregation even then. Uh, and it was so cool. I felt like I felt like a VIP. Like, here I am going to places no white person could ever go. Um, also, I pursued the punk rock thing, which is very odd because I got all this tremendous sophisticated theory and now I'm paring it down to two-note power chords. And one of the reasons I was interested in it, uh, punk rock, is because... Um, I was too young to have been a hippie, and I watched the hippie revolution flower up until the late 60s, and then it died in the 70s, and the revolution was gone, and all of a sudden everybody's singing love songs again, and good as that may be, there was no more real social importance to the music. It now became uh, a mercenary thing. Yeah, you're making music to get famous and make money, but on the same token, there was integrity there in the 70s. They, the Beatles raised the bar so high that uh, the 70s musicians tried to beat that. 
And so you'd get bands like Steely Dan or Earth, Wind & Fire, where you get more sophistication in the sound, um, jazz chords, that sort of thing, horn arrangements. So the 70s, the way I see it, was kind of a flowering of the 60s, or a maturation process that happened in the 60s. Um, in any case, so I, was, I got involved, I, I fell in love with, uh, well, I wasn't really a hardcore punker, I was more like New Wave, so I was into Joe Jackson and Elvis Costello and that sort of thing and follow through with that. And then at the same time as we move into the 80s, I wound up uh, becoming friends with um, a percussionist who was the lead drummer for Baba Tunde Olatunji. And I started hanging out with the African musicians and playing African music. And that, uh, for some reason, that was destiny for me because when I moved to Los Angeles, I was back in New York, by the way. I moved to LA in 1989 and um, uh, I immediately got two different African uh, gigs, two different African bands. Blew my mind. I mean, it, it just seemed to be part of what I was to learn as a musician. And I've since come to realize that if anything is going to save the world, it's music, and specifically African music. Because African music, its sole purpose, its one purpose, is a celebration of being alive. And if humanity needs anything right now, it's that kind of hope and uh, uh, and uh, positive vibrations coming through. I don't sound too much like a hippie, I hope. Uh, in any case, um, yeah, so that's basically a rundown of my history. Uh, also, I just wanted to talk a little bit about my YouTube channel. If you go to the playlist section, you'll see various categories. The category for this playlist will be Fragments of Infinity. Um, now, Fragments of Infinity, I will do an overview on my next video, which may even come up today or tomorrow. Uh, but as regards my YouTube channel, I, uh, well, first of all, my gratitude to James Corbett, like in one fell swoop, he just changed my YouTube life and I got double the subscribership and I get new subscribers every day now because of James. And thank you so much, James, for that. You are awesome, man. Um, funny thing is, too, James Corbett, uh, you know, this is kind of a dirty word nowadays, but he's a conspiracy theorist. He didn't know me, but um, he liked my teaching videos. And uh, turns out, I too am a conspiracy theorist. Uh, so we're gonna have we have a lot in common, and I love the way James thinks. I think he's really even-handed and reasonable and makes sense. He's not a raving maniac that says reptilians are taking over the planet. So I like his way of thinking. In any case, uh, regarding my YouTube channel, so we're going to have the Fragments of Infinity series, which is basically my book uh, called Fragments of Infinity, which I haven't yet completed, but I have the entire sequence down, and so I know how I'm going to sequence these videos. Um, Fragments of Infinity will be purely music theory, all right? And I'll go into more depth about that in my next video. Uh, if you look on my playlist, you'll see V squared. Uh, v squared is Vlad and Vinny. Vlad Schwartzman and me, Vinny Caggiano, uh, thus the V squared. Um, he's a cellist and he's a killer cello player and we got along great uh, musically and uh, so we have a bunch of live videos from my busking space out here in Venice, California. Um, you'll see Vinny Caggiano, eclectic guitarist acoustic and that's all my acoustic work, and that's kind of drawing on western swing, jazz, and, uh, and gypsy jazz as well. Um, that proceeded from a different band that I'll talk about in a minute. Um, there is the Synergy Cafe with Spring, and that is basically me uh, uh, doing a solo performance, and this is back in the days when uh, the looping work I did. I did live looping right in front of you. Nothing was saved or in memory. And I did live looping, and um, it was more psychedelic and multi-layered than what I'm doing now. A great playlist is uh, the Blue Kind. That's, I think, we're one of the best bands in Los Angeles. We got a couple of really high quality videos in there. You may want to check us out. I call us a brass band because it's blues, rock, and jazz. Brass. And we have brass instruments too, so there's a horn section in our band. Love this group, by the way. Um, you'll see the Elegant Strangers. That's the present group I'm in, and what we're doing is taking hits from the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, and recent, and uh, 
tweaking them because we're all kind of jazz musicians, so we we kind of mess with the tunes. We take uh, liberties with them. And there are a few different Elegant Strangers performances up there, the closing of Danny's, uh, which was a great place that we played at. Um, the Novel Cafe videos are uh, basically uh, the days of my psychedelic looping, again in the early 2000s. I did some, I'm very happy with the work I did in that. Um, let's see what else we got. Uh, of course, there's the Beatles analysis, which is what brought a lot of you folks here uh, from James Corbett's uh, feature of myself lecturing on, uh, on For the Benefit of Mr. Kite by the Beatles. And by the way, I do have a, um, there might be more videos along those lines on my Facebook fan page, which would be uh, forward slash Vinstrel, V-I-N-S-T-R-E-L, like Minstrel with a V. Um, and that's about it. I mean, you can peruse as you like, enjoy. I'm very excited about my doing my Fragments of Infinity series, um, and I hope that people get something out of it. It's very important to me that I get this information out because I feel like what we've been taught in music school is only the tip of the iceberg of what's really going on in music and uh, how music actually works. And I believe I have a refreshing new perspective on it. Uh, I'll be talking about that in my overview video. Thanks very much for checking this out, and see you soon. Bye, YouTubers.